Hi, it's Carly McAvoy. I wanted to show you how to use your TI-84 Plus to find the area given a z-score using the normal CDF button. In the next video, I'll show you how to find the z-score given the area using the inverse normal. So when you want to find the area under a curve, we want to talk about z, and z could be between two values, or we might say it's greater than a but less than b, or it could be greater than a value or less than a value. And we're going to use the TI-84, but I have pictures embedded in this document so that you can kind of see what we're talking about. Here are the steps to find the area under the curve or the z-score on your TI-84. If that's enough for you, then that would be great. Take those and run with it. But I'm going to show you a few examples. The first one I'm saying, what if we wanted to find the area under a curve if z is less than 1.27? So we know that the mean would be 0 and a normal distribution and so one is the standard deviation a little bit further than that this shows a picture at 1.27 and you can see here we're talking about what if it was less than 1.27 we would get this answer that rounds to 0.8980 I'll show you how to do that on your calculator and then if it was less than negative 1.27 well here's zero here's negative one and we're going a little further back than that so then we have a much smaller area that we're talking about about 10% or 0 0.1020 and again these pictures are not from your 84 but I just want you to see what we're talking about when we do that so let's take a look at um, the calculator the 84 plus to get to this you're going to push second function and then VARS which has the distribution above it is what you're looking for we want normal CDF you can scroll down to that and hit enter or you could just press 2 in that first one we went all the way to the left which is negative infinity and that's what this represents negative 1 e to the 99th power so we're gonna go e means 99th power I should say I'm gonna go ahead and delete that negative because I want to look at 1.27 first and then I'm gonna hit enter my mean is zero my standard deviation is one and I'm going to paste all that information into this parentheses and that's telling me all this stuff that I said and then I'm going to hit enter one more time and I'm going to get that 0 0.89795 which I rounded up to 8980 if I did the same thing again uh, with the other number I can just hit 2 to get to that and this time I do want to look at what if it was negative 1.27 and then I hit enter 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 and I have all that pasted in one more enter gives me that 0 0.1020 and that's how to use this program but if you want to know a little bit more I'm going to show a few more examples so stick around if you'd like to see a few more examples using this calculator to do some of these problems so for the next one what I have is what if z was greater than 2.35 here's zero remember most of our 95 percent of our values fall between 2 and negative 2 so we're at 2.35 we have a very small percentage here it turns out to be 0 0.0094 rounded something really small and the other one is less than one point negative 1.78 and but it's p is i'm sorry greater than negative 1.78 so starting over here here's one here's 2 we're at negative 1.78 and everything greater than that that's going to be a pretty big part of that curve so I'm going to show you how to do both of those in case you're interested so let's take a look again I want to look at um, the normal distribution so I'm going to go to the normal CDF but this time on that last one I'm saying it goes from 2.35 up to infinity so I'm going to do 2.35 here and then I'm going to go down and put in 1 and then I'm going to put the EE button here I'm going to do second function EE to give me that E to the 99 so I'm going from 2.35 up to positive infinity my mean and standard deviation don't change I'm going to paste all that in there and hit enter and that gives me that 0 0.0094 that I mentioned before a very very small percentage that just that bit to the right and for the next one I'm going from to z is greater than negative uh, 1.78 so second function distribution go into that and again instead of having a positive here I have negative 1.78 which covers most of that curve and then when I put all those values in 
and hit enter, I get that 96%. So that's what we would do. You can sometimes be going into negative infinity with that negative one, or you could have an upper infinity that you're looking at and have a value below that. And that kind of gives you both of that. And one more thing to show you on this uh, that I want to show you is what if we had something between two values? I'm going to just show you this part right here. So in this case, we have something between negative 2 and 1.5. And so negative 2 makes sense. We're going back 2 from 0 and 1.5, 1.5 1 up, and we want to know what this is in between there. So we're not going to infinity on the left or the right. We're stopping on the left. We're stopping on the right. So what does that look like then? That looks like second function distribution. Go down 1 to hit enter. And then uh, we have... Um, what were those numbers? We have um, negative 2 and 1.5. So we have negative 2 and up here we have 1.5. So I'm not putting infinity on either side and then I do keep my mean and my standard deviation, paste all that in for the calculator and hit enter to get that 91 percent which is what we expected to see. All right have a fantastic day and I'll talk to you next time.